guys. Welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today we're going to um, review the element of art called value. Please start by putting your first name, last initial on the top, and your grade or class right there. So like I said, we're talking about value. Value is V-A-L-U-E. Value has a couple of different meanings that I know of. First of all, I can say, what is the value of my car or my house? When I'm talking about how much does it cost or how much is it worth? Um, I can also talk about value in I value my family. I value my friendships. It's how much, how important something is to you. But today we're going to talk about it um, as an element of art. And the value of something is the darkness or lightness of an image. So please write darkness on the first line and lightness on the second. Um, and here I have a little picture of it. I have different values on each of these stars. I made a white one, a light gray, middle gray, dark gray, and black to show you some different values. So the lightest value that we know of is white, and the darkest is black, and halfway between these we call it middle gray. All right, now we're going to practice making some different values with our pencil. And we're going to turn the page, and on the back of that page, I have three different types of value scales. A value scale shows the values go that go from white to black. So first we're going to use hatching, and hatching has diagonal lines that go one way. So please write one right there. In the first box it says white. We're just going to leave that completely white, and then we're going to use diagonal lines to shade in the light gray box light gray. Now we're going to try to fill up the whole box from one corner to the other. Looks like I missed this corner a little bit, so I'm going to go back and add that. And we want the whole box to be one shade. Then I'm going to go middle gray, so I'm going to push it a little bit harder, but keeping my lines going diagonally. Now, I'm going to check that box and make sure all the whole box is filled in. Then I'm going to move on to my dark gray. It needs to be darker than what I just did, but not quite as dark as my pencil can go yet. It takes a little longer in this box. Keeping my lines diagonal because I'm using hatching. Just check your box. And then my last one, I'm going, I want to make sure it's, well, I'm looking, I missed a little bit in the middle there. My last one, I'm going to push as hard as I can make my pencil go without breaking my pencil lead or ripping my paper. Check your box, make sure you have all the corners filled in. And then just double check that it goes from lightest and each one looks darker all the way to the darkest. And then just clean up any edges that got outside. All right, the next one is called cross hatching. Cross hatching has diagonal lines that go both ways. It's a crisscross pattern. So first, my white one I'm just gonna leave alone. My light gray one, I'm going to lightly do diagonal lines one way, filling in the whole box, and then I can come back and I'm going to twist my paper and do diagonal lines the other way, keeping it very light. Okay, now I'm going to go on to my middle gray and do diagonal lines one way, just a little bit harder. And then I'm going to do diagonal lines the other way. This is about normal pencil pressure. I'm going to make sure that these look like they're getting darker as they go. Now I'm going to go to dark gray. This is harder than normal pencil pressure. Stay on the diagonal. One way diagonal. And then come back and do the other way diagonal. Sure, it looks like it got darker. And then my last one needs to be my black. Just 
pretty hard. Once you get your diagonal lines done one way, come back the other way. Feel free to twist your paper so it gets easier for your hand. And then double check that it gets darker as it goes and then if you need to clean up any edges. Okay, our last value scale we're going to talk about this year is stippling. Stippling is dots. And sometimes it's called pointillism. In the white box, we don't need to do anything. And in the gray box, I'm going to do just a few dots. Now I want to hold my pencil straight up and down. And I want to go soft. If I go too hard, they become little lines. And when I have that box evenly covered with dots, I'm going to move on to the middle gray box where I'm going to need more dots. When you all are working on this, sometimes it sounds like a rainstorm. This one definitely has more dots than the last one. I'm still going slow, I'm not pushing too hard where my lines start to look like my dots start to look like lines. You can tell that it gets a little darker. And now I'm gonna do dark gray. I need a lot more dots this time. Notice how slow I'm going to get it done. Now, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking my dark gray and my middle gray look pretty close to each other. So I'm going to keep going over it a little bit more so I can tell that there's a difference between how many dots I have in my dark gray and how many dots I have in my middle gray. And then my last one is going to be my darkest of all. It's going to take the longest because it needs the most dots. Remember, these dots are called stippling or pointillism. Or some artists in the early 1900s and late 1800s who painted entire pictures with just dots of paint. When you're done, just double check that each one looks like it gets darker. Okay, and then the last one is scumbling, and it's little circles or curly lines. So again, in the white, we're going to do nothing, but in the light gray, we're going to make little circles with our pencil. And I love to use scumbling in our shadow when we're doing drawings of different things. So the first one is just going to be light gray. Then on the next one, we're going to push a little harder. They're going to be a little denser or closer together so that less white is showing. I'm just going to push a little harder with my pencil. This is like normal pencil pressure. I want to make sure that the whole box is about the same shade. And on the dark gray, again, we're going to push a little bit more. Making sure this still looks 
significantly darker than before, but not as dark as I can go yet. Little circles curl and cover the whole box. Make sure it's about the same value everywhere. So a little spot there in the middle that wasn't quite the same. And then we have the black. Now I'm pushing as hard as my pencil will go without breaking my lead or ripping my paper, making those little circles quite close together. And I'm going to fill in the whole box. All right, now we All right, you guys, that is how you create value scales. I can't wait to see what you create.